Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homerton University Hospital. Today I'm going to talk to you about what really happens with a unilateral oophorectomy in assisted conception. Let's go back to what we have been taught. We believe that if you remove the ovary on one side, the other ovary compensates. That may be happening in nature. We also used to believe that if you remove the ovary on one side, the other ovary will produce the same quality of oocytes or embryos eventually, and the success rates will be very much the same. Now, there is a review which looks at reduced live birth rates after IVF and ICSI in women with previous unilateral oophorectomy. It's a result of a multicentric trial published in Human Reproduction 2017. So when you have a look at what this was done is the question here asked was, is there a reduced birth rate after IVF and ICSI in women with unilateral oophorectomy? In the past, there have been similar pregnancy rates, but there's been no cohort study which looked at live birth rates. The results for a number of cycles were similar in this study. The number of repeat cycles were similar for controls, 48 and 51 for unilateral oophorectomy. Crude cancellation rates for unilateral oophorectomy was 18%. For controls was 15.5%. Mean antral follicle count was lower in unilateral, that was expected. And there were no differences seen in both the groups. Number of embryos and fresh or thought cycles. So if you look at the overall picture, the overall picture does not look worse for unilateral or for the controls. Now, 22,693 controls were taken, 150 unilateral oophorectomies were taken. Six IVF units did this study. And if you look at the numbers, there were large 154 unilateral oophorectomies undergoing 301 IVF cycles, agonist antagonist protocols, doge individualized, HCG cleavage, or blastocyst transfers. Have a look at the results in the graph. Clearly showing the evidence that the number of oocytes obtained in women with unilateral oophorectomy is less. That's not a surprise. It's very much expected. Let's look at the live birth rate. In unilateral oophorectomy, an 18.6% live birth rate. For controls, 25.4% live birth rate. If they underwent and unilateral oophorectomy, there was approximately a 30% odds ratio for live births. Top quality embryos were reduced in unilateral oophorectomy. What was the commonest reasons why women lost their ovaries? Endometriosis and endometrioma were the commonest reasons. What does this tell us? In young women, in women of childbearing age group, Avoid removing the ovary. Avoid doing extensive surgery that forces you to remove the ovary. This study may not be a complete one, but at least it gives us an indication that removal of an ovary it does have implications in the long term. Thus, once again, I think the learning message of this study is that if you can avoid removing an ovary for any reason, except for cancer, I think it is reasonable. Again, combining reproductive surgery between a combination between surgeons and medicine men is something which is needed. Aggressive surgeons are good for pain control. Aggressive surgeons may not be good for retaining or doing conservative surgery. And that balance has to be reached. Thank you very much.